flight suits. Those are as unique to the Mandalorian as the armor is. Every single one is different. So, rather than just buying one, I'm going to make my own. I've got a bunch of different patterns. So I can pick and choose what I want here and there. i got a couple ideas. So let me get everything set up and we will, well, we'll just start drafting, I guess. It is relatively warm today. So uh, I'm losing the overshirt. We're just going to be in tank top. But I'm going to need to do um, measurements anyway. So uh, we're going to start with sleeves. I've got a couple ideas. There it is. So I'm not starting from scratch, right? But for the most part, I'm starting from scratch. Uh, we're going to start with sleeves because they're the easiest to uh, to adjust and play with. They're also of the flight suit because we're only doing the top half. The, the flak vest covers up almost everything on the chest. The armor and the, the bracers are going to cover up most of the sleeve even. This is really just, um, it's, it's really just for me, I guess, to feel... Like I'm wearing a Mandalorian costume. A Mandalorian uniform. I don't really make costumes. I make uniforms. So I'll grab my sleeves, I'll grab some patterns, and we'll, uh, we'll play around with a couple ideas. I do have a bin of patterns, by the way. A lot of my standard patterns are in here. It's a, the McCall vest I normally wear. Battlestar Galactica. Galactica, my Officer Jaspers, that's what I'm looking for. This is my Imperial Pilot flight suit. Alright, I pulled out all the pieces I think I'm going to need. Um, one thing I cannot recommend enough is if you're going to be doing stuff like this, get a big sheet of paper. Big sheets of paper are super, super useful. They're worth their weight in big sheets of paper. The well, problem with rolls is they uh, tend to roll. So a lot of YouTube channels don't go over the patterning process because um, it's complicated, to say the least. Let's uh, let's reposition this so you can see the sleeve. Now this is not a full tutorial on how to make sleeves. This is just showing you how I'm going to make my sleeves. So Mandalor remove superfluous stuff. Mandalorian flight suits tend to be a little more form fitting, um, which is unfortunate. But I think I'm going with a nine inch wrist. So if I have a, a half inch seam allowance on both sides, my wrist needs to be ten. This one is fourteen. So I'm gonna mark my middle point. I said ten. Mark that and a half inch because I want to know that seam allowance is already included. The length I think is fine because it's going to get a little baggier at the top. So we're going to reline this up. All right. Gonna talk uh, patterns real quick. This is the bell for uh, the sleeve. Um, this is, so that, that top arc is your arm's eye, right? That's, that's this part where your, your sleeve goes. Um, the tighter you make this, uh, you tend to have a little more movement, but um, the tight is uncomfortable. The length here, from this point to this point, this straight line, is how big your bicep is. So for me, since I want something relatively form-fitting, I'm probably going to go like 13, 14. Well, go 17. That that looks like it gives me enough. In fact, we're going to go 16. We're going to go 16 and then 17 um, with seam allowance. Uh, length is fine. This one is currently set for 22. As it's, it's much baggier flight suit. Uh, the Imperial is versus what I'm about to do. And I want my arm's eye to be probably about there. Nice. It's got a bit of loose movement to it. And that's 22. And 
this one is currently 24. So it's not, not, not too terrible. Um, but that means since I want this to be 24 and this to be um, 16, the, the arc is going to be higher than, than I, I initially expect. So let me do some quick math and figure out what all that's going to look like. And then we'll pick back up. Since I, whoa. So I've added a couple of things, right? Um, I've got a, not quite a cuff, right? Cause I want, I don't want a cuff on this end. I want it to end right where it's at. So, um, this is just where it's going to fold over because this is going to have a zipper and I want the, um, inseam, I guess to be 20 inches. But since I want the bicep to be 16, I have to, uh, so that puts me right there. That's why I have two of them out. Um, just so I can line everything up. I don't care what the, 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 the bell's doing just yet. I just want to focus on this part. And since I now have that line, now I'm going to break these corners later, curve everything, make them a little smoother, but not much. So that's the underarm part. Then I just measure the top, which I wanted, I believe to be 24 and put in my marks. And this is basically my, uh, my bell curve but since I want it to be 22 that means this should be 11 and that's pretty close it's 10 I think I can live with that so that's what we're gonna run with it'll be a little snugger than I want but since the back is gonna have a a, a flare it'll be fine my poor Sharpie seems to be dying I could use a French curve to make that line exact. It's not nearly that important, but I am worried about this. So I'm going to measure cause this, this straight line is two inches. I'm going to measure down an inch and then I'm going to measure up an inch and I'm going to connect them, which will curve that line out just a little bit, smooth everything just a touch. Nice. So now it's going to go like that. This is get this is going to get folded and then folded under. So that is exactly what I want my sleeve to look like. Well, half of my sleeve. And draw the other side, and then we get to play with details. And the best way to make something identical is to cut it out halfway fold it over and trace the other side. And that's what I'm about to do. Since the base sleeve is done, there are things that I'm like, I kind of want and I kind of want, but there are things I absolutely know. Like I know I want uh, an outer sleeve over this sleeve. So I can use this to trace that outer sleeve. So now I know I want the second sleeve to be nine inches from this point, right? Which is actually kind of difficult to just measure unless I use my grid because as long as I have this center seam on one of these points, all I have to do is count nine inches down, right? Should put me right about here, right? So I connect these two dots right about here. That is roughly the size of the sleeve, the second sleeve I'm trying to do. So that gives us this shape right here. Now, since I have a half inch seam allowance, I have to remember that this has to kick out the same amount. That's also why I draw in all my seam allowances. So I don't forget to add little things like that. Cause when it folds over, um, it should match up. Of course, cause I, I can't just, I have to be extra. I want all kinds of weird stuff going on on this pocket. I will probably end up drawing this entire uh, pattern three or four times before everything is said and done because I'm going to add pieces, I'm going to cut out pieces, I'm going to move over pieces. I want this little detail. I want extra seams up here. I think I want them three inches. 
We'll go over three inches, and three inches. And I want it to angle this way. To right about there, I'd say. And I want this piece to be a separate piece so it gets seamed in place. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here with the band. So let me show you what that's all going to look like. Fabric's out of the washer dryer, so any shrinking will have already happened. Um, so ironing is to fabric what sanding is to crafting. Nobody really likes doing it, but it's something that has to be done. So I'm going to iron everything I just drafted and this fabric. And you don't need to watch that, so we'll, uh, we'll pick it back up in a minute. Well, a second for you. A lifetime for me. So here's what I got for the sleeve. Got the base sleeve, right? Then I want this detail on top. This is going to get folded over on the seam line and then double stitched in place. I think it'll look neat. It'll just add a little bit of interest. Then I have, then I have the outer, the the short sleeve piece, which is going to go like that. Right? I've added a half an inch onto this so um, so it's not super snug. You know what I mean? Um, if, if it's the same size, it's going to be tight. I want it to have a little bit of a shadow, a little bit of depth there. So, I mean, yeah, most of this is going to be covered, but not all of it. So it's going to look kind of like that, which I think will look very neat. The back is almost identical to my um, Imperial Officer. The, the bridge crew, I'm going to keep it, the back and the front, almost identical. Um, the lines and everything. So if you want to know how to do that, I've got that tutorial. I'm going to trace those out real quick so we can uh, put the whole front, at least pattern, together right now and see what we got. Change my mind. I want the back, or the front, to be one solid piece. Um, I've got enough going on on the flight vest, or the, the flak vest, to compensate for any you know, boringness that this may have. The sleeves are interesting. The legs are going to be interesting. The front and back can just be the front and back. I think for the most part I got the pattern figured out. Well, there's going to be little parts that I don't have, like the flaps for the zippers on the inside. I don't have that. Um, and then whatever I'm doing with the zipper in the front because since I'm not doing screen accurate, I can do whatever I want and actually put a real zipper in like they're supposed to be, not just how they were done. Let me play it. Let me show you what we got so far. All right. First thing we've got is the front flap. And instead of doing one piece like I originally wanted to, I'm doing two. On this piece, all these lines are accent lines, and I want it quilted. So I'm going to do four, put some batting in between, so it's got a little bit of texture to it. And then that gets sewn right on the front like that. And I think that'll look really interesting. There's the front. The back is just standard. This flap goes in here and this flap goes right there. Right, just like, that's just like the Imperial. Then I have the actual sleeve, which has got um, this, this just piece that's gonna get ironed and folded and then stitched on top and then the short sleeve which is going to be there's two of these one on either side and then the uh the hem all the way across with all the act these are also accent stitches so i think between that we're ready to cut it out of fabric and the fabric for me was an interesting choice i got this this is a let me pull out the tag, see what it says. This is a herringbone twill dark gray cotton. It's four yards, by the way. But it's relatively plain. There's no real texture to it. Uh, I, I think the stitching is going to be all the texture I really need. So now, I sit there and trace everything onto this and cut it out. Let me do that in a time lapse so we can uh, skip on to the interesting stuff.
So there it is. All chalked up and ready to be cut out. Which would normally be fine, except I am a little worried because I used a lot of fabric on this. Because this is a lot more fabric than uh, my normal jumpsuits. I'm not going to sew it because I'm not sure what color I want the top stitching to be just yet. I'm going to go to a fabric store tomorrow, look around. I also need to pick up the little zippers. But I'm going to call it a night because I'm drenched in sweat. It's very warm today and I have no AEC. So uh, we'll pick this up tomorrow when things have hopefully cooled down a little bit. So I got a zipper. This is the, uh, the kind that can unzip from the bottom and the top. It's, it's a jumpsuit or a flight suit. I feel it's kind of important. Two zippers for the arms. I went with the gray because I thought that was kind of neat. They actually match pretty okay. I picked up some batting for the uh, the kidney plate pieces. It's not kidney. It's the front obliques maybe. And I also marked all of the lines on the front that I'm going to stitch. And then I cut out a piece and just set it there. So next step I'm going to do is I'm going to um, let me bring you around so you can see what I'm talking about. So I chalked all of the lines. I basically just set my ruler down and then traced it. And each of these lines is going to be a stitch line. I've decided to go with a, a tan. I think that's going to bring the... the um, I just think it's a good combination. So I'm going to start by stitching all of these lines. And then I'm going to do a zigzag stitch all the way around to, uh, to lock everything in place. So very little has um, improved my sewing more than elevating my sewing machine. This, best thing I've done in, in the shop. But now we're going to attach the sides, the front. Let me play around so I can show you what we're doing. So this is the backs of both of these pieces. And I want to sew this side to here. But knowing where to stop sewing is kind of difficult. So I'm going to mark everything. I found marking everything is the fastest, easiest way to make sure I don't do something stupid. Because I'm real good at that. So I'm going to mark in half an inch because that's my seam allowance. And then half an inch up here. Half an inch here. And then half an inch here. And this will or will not make sense in a couple of seconds. We'll find out together. This is my seam allowance, right? And I want all of this to fold under this way. But I need to clip right here. And that's important. So that lets everything fold. It also lets me know where to stop sewing. So this piece which goes right here. Actually, which goes right here like that. And I'm going to pin all of this, flip it over and show you what's going to happen. I almost did that backwards. It goes on this way. What am I thinking? I know that this lines up like that. This all gets pinned together and then sewn. That'll make sense in a second. That looks fantastic. Corner, nice and crisp. 
The double stitch, double stitching looks fantastic. Um, now you can't use, they do make double needles that can do something similar to this. Those can't curve and can't do points like this. Um, they have to be parallel the whole, the whole time. And I really like um, the ability to have this just keep going and turn. I like that, which is why I do that. So then we just do that another time and uh, front will be done. Here's the front. Pretty much what it's going to look like. Oh my goodness, is that amazing. That is going to be... Oh, that's neat. We're doing the um, the small sleeve that goes over the big sleeve. And I just have the two flaps on top of the, uh, the big middle piece. And that's just getting sewn with half inch seam allowance. Um, zigzagged on the back and then folded flat and open and top stitched just like the, uh, the front was. Then we take the bottom piece and sew it on and do the same thing. It should just take a couple of seconds. So we'll pull you around, we'll see what we can see. The accent piece marked out half inch all the way around the sides the top is open because that doesn't get a seam but now i'm going to iron everything flat and then pin it to the big sleeve okay it's been ironed and pinned and now it's going to be top stitch it's still a solid piece underneath too but this is just going to get top it's going to get the double stitching all the way around um i thought about maybe putting something in the center but i don't think i'm gonna i think i'm just going to do the single stitching all the way around. Because once this is all together, yeah, it's going to look a little something like that. And that is a super cool looking sleeve. Look at these sleeves. I love the fact that these don't line up. They're offset a bit. Oh my goodness, this is going to be... I'm very happy with this. Because the gauntlets are going to come up to here. And my van braces. So you're not going to see most of this, but... And then I'm going to have shoulder pads over all of this. But the little bits that do exp are exposed, it's just going to look fantastic. On to the back. The back panel gets the two small flaps. Uh, right side to right side. I'm going to do about a quarter inch seam allowance, flip it over, and then do two top stitches. Since these curve in, to flip them the, around, I need to um, put a bunch of relief cuts all along the arc. Been top stitched. Now these just go right side to right side and just get stitched and zigzagged across here. And that completes the back. So I've pinned the front and the back together, um, right sides to right sides, right at the shoulder. I'm going to do a half an inch stitch, then a zigzag, then I'm going to fold it so it goes with the fold going to the back, and then I'm going to do my top stitch. <laughs> So if I did my job right, this should be 90, or this should be 20, which it is, and then this should be 20, which it also is. So I'll put them right sides to right sides. Let's not forget the full sleeve. Again, right sides facing each other. I'm going to start pinning in the middle and just pin all the way around. And then, like this, well, I'm probably not doing a top stitch on the sleeve. All right. So now that we have the sleeve on, we got to connect the armpit area. It's actually pretty easy. The hardest part is figuring out which way I want um, this seam to fold. And I want 
the salvage edge to go towards the sleeve so that the, the, it dies in the sleeve itself. I'm just going to put a pin in there on both sides. Where the, uh, the back flap is, I'm going to put two pins in to hold that in place as well. And then in the front, I want it to do the exact same thing the back does. All I do is fold everything over. Make sure all of my edges line up. And then I want to make sure that these all line up. Which they easily do. So I am just going to stick a pin in it. Make sure it's nice and taut. Normally I would stitch the whole length of the sleeve, but since I'm probably putting zippers on, and I'm going probably because I have to see if I can, if I can get my arm in without the zippers, I'm not putting zippers on it. If I have to put zippers on, I will. I prefer not to. Pin along the edge here. There's going to be a little overlap in the back because the back is a little long. I'm going to trim that off in a bit and then mark it on my pattern so when I inevitably have to redo all of this stuff, I uh, don't have to remember what I did differently or why it's not quite working. I will probably be doing a top stitch to the armpit over and then back down, but I want to make sure everything fits first. And I'm only doing the top stitch on the, the, the rib part right here, and that's just to make sure everything stays exactly where I want. And I'm only going to go a couple inches past where this second, the short sleeve is, just, you know, because, again, I have to deal with hemming, and then I have to figure out whether I'm putting a zipper on or not. First, this gets uh, stitched, and then zigzag stitched. Since I'm worried about how tight these are, I'm probably going to go with a quarter inch seam allowance, doesn't really matter, um, but it just, you know, for posterity's sake, seem to be, you know, completely transparent. I'm going to make this seem a little little thinner because I am a little worried um, that I made it too form-fitting and this harder fabric is going to be uncomfortable. So, I don't need zippers, but it's very snug, so getting it on and off is going to be entertaining. Uh, I can't do the zipper or the collar because they have to be all done at once once the pants are done. But... It fits fantastic. I mean, at this point, all we got left is to uh, try it all on, right? I think it's about where we're at. So basically, this whole thing... I have a little bit peeking out right here, and then the sleeves. But the sleeves just absolutely complete this thing. I don't have the back plate on, by the way. Um, but, oh my goodness. The more I look at it, the more I think I may put an ab plate in. I haven't quite decided. But, this is fantastic. It's the first time I put the whole thing on like this. I love these sleeves. Look at that. Let's, let's adjust a little bit so we can look at the sleeves. I mean, that looks that looks Mandalorian to me. Got accent stitching. Got weird seams that don't quite make any sense. Oh, I am super excited about this. The bracer, it's van braces fit perfect. Uh, the thing that is missing is... Come, here. come on, don't be shy. This collar um, is going to be cut into kind of like a dickie that goes on underneath the flak vest and under the flight suit. So that'll be right there. I take the lining out of the gloves and they fit like a glove. Weird how that happens. Oh, I am so... Come on. Happy with this costume.
So I can't do the zipper until we have the bottom half because, you know, the zipper runs the full length. But, see this? When I put it on the first time, the fabric split. I was like, son of a... But, easy little patch. Once I put the, uh, a collar on it, that'll reinforce all of this. I need to uh, cut the sleeves right about here and uh, put in a hem. Other than that, this thing is done. Look at that. I'd say it looks Mandalorian-ish. At a convention, taking this thing off is not going to be a pleasant experience. It's all right. Costuming isn't always pleasant experiences. You get to wear this now. This guy needs better shoulders. I think that's the next upgrade I'm going to do. 3D print him a couple of shoulders. Almost gonna be a shame to put this in a bin. Closer idea what everything's going to look like. That's not bad. That is not bad. We're almost done with the flight suit. Um, next, we do the pants. There's all kinds of weird stuff going on with the pants, by the way. Um, I've got... These knee pads have been floating around my shop for almost two months now. They're getting incorporated. They're going to be sewn in. Super cool. You don't want to miss that. You know, the best way to not miss that is to uh, like and subscribe. Ring the bell. Leave a comment. Share. We all know what we're doing, right? So many sleeves. There it goes. Yeah, there's almost none of this ribbing showing. It's done solely for me. And you, of course. Sleeves are up nice and tall. 
It's my manic. I love the fact that I can still fit my hand in here because it's a separate piece. And it's not just stitched right there, you know? All right. That looks pretty okay. Let's, there we go. Another piece down. Like I said, we're going to see where we're going with this. Stick around. Either way, thanks for making it to the end. I appreciate that. Hope I see you next time.